Oh, recording the video. All right. So today uh, we will keep talking about the excess Gibbs energy and uh, its uh, connection with uh, the activity coefficient. Uh, so on this slide, uh, I show you the three equations we have been talking about. So here we are looking at uh, this excess Gibbs energy and the Gibbs energy change upon mixing. And uh, you can see that we are able to identify the pair with the help of the general equation. If I have a property of the mixture M, then the, this is the mixture. Then that property M can be expressed as the summation of the molar fraction of Xi and Mi partial, right? So with that, we are able to identify the corresponding pairs. For instance, for the uh, excess Gibbs energy, then we need to rewrite this term. Uh, GE over RT is corresponding to log gamma I. Similarly, this data G over RT would be corresponding to log Xi gamma I, right? And then the uh, other equation is uh, the so-called Gibbs to Helm equation. Uh, so this is the GD equation. Uh, pay attention to the format of the uh, DMI partial term. Uh, so for a binary system, we could have this x1 dm1 partial plus x2 dm2 partial would be zero. And then we have uh, other equation uh, equally important for our calculations. That would be if I know one and the total, I can easily calculate the other, which is let's say for a binary system, this is N1 partial. If I know the total, which is M of the mixture, then M minus X2 uh, partial derivative of the total with respect to X2. Of course, I carry out this calculation with the understanding of fixed temperature and, and, uh, and pressure. Right, so pay attention that uh, here, <coughs> We have this, and over there we have this partial. Okay, and you may realize that uh, well, we 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 are able to to express some energy terms as a function of uh, xi. So that is the uh, very general concept that is uh, now we are looking at. Uh, A mixing process, we can have multiple streams or inputs, right? This is one inlet two, inlet three, and then we are going to have this uh, mixture. And usually, we carry out the mixture and we try to observe at equilibrium. Uh, possibly, we are looking at the phase, or we are going to allow reaction. Uh, no matter how at the equilibrium for the uh, mixture, what would be the molar fraction for the vapor and liquid? And also for the vapor, what would it be the uh, Y1, Y2, their ratio? For the liquid, what would it be X1 and X2, right? So we need to figure out uh, uh, two ratios, one is vapor over liquid. Uh, the other is inside that vapor phase, what would be the molar uh, fraction of all those components. Also, one other note is uh, typically when we look at the equilibrium, whether through the phase uh, physical interactions or through reaction, which is chemical interactions, we are typically looking at uh, uh, a known TP condition, right? So this is why eventually, eventually we are going to express all those interesting, interesting properties as 
a function of TP XI and uh, at this fixed uh, temperature and pressure condition, we try to express this as uh, a function of the molar fraction XI or YI. So this is indeed why now you can, you can see that we are always having uh, XI, uh, XI over here and the temperature, temperature will be a known value generally from the problem statement. Okay. And of course, if we are trying to start from the very beginning of the discussion, then uh, for any, any system like that, we shall start with the criteria. How do we determine the equilibrium state? And uh, 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 we try to go from there. And if we think about the previous discussion we had, then we need to satisfy T uh, liquid would be T vapor. The pressure of the liquid would be the pressure of the vapor. The chemical potential of any component in the liquid would be the chemical potential of any vapor. Then we uh, turn that chemical potential calculation into fugacity, right? If I vapor, and then we move on to figure that out. So you can see that all those terms are interconnected with each other uh, when we try to combine the uh, the uh, the uh, first slide of the uh, mixture. Uh, so they should be able to come back and work together to help us to solve the problem. So let's move on to uh, look at another problem uh, to see how we are going to use the uh, those very useful equations. I want to add a note that yes, uh, some student asked me, uh, are we going to have any problem uh, to, to derive something? Uh, I said, no. Uh, uh, no, because I, I, I will not ask you to, uh, to prove or to derive how do, you, uh, how do you figure out this GE would be RT XI. I will not ask you to calculate or to derive this equation or the gibbs to hamill equation. However, when you start from the, the gibbs to hamill equation or the other useful correlation for the calculation, you need to really figure out how I'm going to simplify, how I'm going to go like we, we discussed. If I have the expression of the V mixture as A X1, plus five, for example, then uh, you need to come up with the ideas that is, uh, if I want to understand this V1 of the pure, then you need to understand that is V1 of the pure would be uh, pushing the X1 goes to one of the mixture. So that you are going to have the expression for the pure volume of component one. I would not treat this as a, a derive or anything like that. So you need to be familiar and comfortable with those type of questions. And that's indeed the reason why I'm having so many examples uh, compared with the previous lectures uh, to look uh, at uh, similar problems, okay? So pay attention to those. Uh, so now let's, let's look at this example five. Uh, it says for a binary solution, at low pressure, suppose we have an equation to describe the activity coefficient of the solvent. Uh, this is natural log gamma i as a function of x2. So now we need to derive the activity coefficient of the solute at the same temperature. Okay. So we have this as the function of solvent. Uh, apparently this is component one. Right, so now we need to have the activity coefficient of the solid, which is component of two at the same temperature. So normally for this chapter, we, we are not, uh, we are not uh, manipulating temperature. So uh, this is a typical fixed temperature, fixed pressure uh, type of problem. So how do we start from there? So we, we, we only have two useful equations to start with. Like I said, one is the M1 is N minus X2. Okay. The other is the so-called Gibbs to Helm equation, which is X1 pi 
partial plus x2 will be 0. Okay. So over here, we know that that is uh, the activity coefficient of natural log is some type of partial molar property, right? So if that is the case, then we can utilize this GD equation. Okay. So we know this is uh, corresponding to X1 and we are able to easily manipulate if you want to, to replace X2 by one minus X1 if needed. There's always equation uh, hidden somewhere uh, for us to utilize. And then we, we, we should be able to quickly uh, figure out this equation. Probably we, we, we have this the derivative instead of this uh, activity coefficient. And then we, we, we need to figure out if I'm going to moving forward, if I'm going to take uh, this as the integral, how do I figure that out, right? As I, as I discussed uh, yesterday in the summary video, we need to push this to x2, then uh -oh. suppose we are going to set up the equation as a function of x2, then if, if my x2 value is zero, then uh, I don't have any of the component two. If I'm going to have x2 goes one, then I'm going to have the pure x2. So this is no x2 component, this is pure x2. I'm going to make the correspondence. And this is the general x2, then you are going to have this general activity coefficient, right? So that would be the math you need to uh, figure out. Okay, so by that analysis, we shall be able to move on and uh, uh, start the problem. Uh, yep. So here we are using this uh, gibbs to hammer equation because we know that uh, activity coefficient i is the corresponding partial molar property of GE over RT. So as long as it is the uh, uh, some type of partial molar property, then we can utilize the gibbs to hammer equation. So moving forward, we, we, we see that uh, the uh, log gamma two is uh, the function. We try to write this as a function of dx two. And then we, uh, we are here, we are utilizing this pure uh, component two, which is a pure liquid. Uh, then we are, we are going to have the corresponding value of activity coefficient is one. Then the log of the value would be zero. Right, so on the left hand side, we are going to have the natural log comma two minus zero. On the right hand side, we take the integral from x2 is one, moving to a general x2 value. And then it's just a matter of uh, figure out the, uh, those uh, mathematical terms we know the function of log as a function of x2, right? So then you just take the time to uh, do the partial partial, de partial derivative, or here is the full derivative because that's the only, uh, uh, only parameter in the, uh, in the log, log gamma two equation. Uh, no, this is gamma one. Okay. So that is how you are going to start the problem and try to make, uh, make progress. Uh, keep in mind that those would be the two useful equations, whether this is the one to start with or this is the one uh, we are going to pick up. They don't have too many, too many equations. Uh, so try to think of one of the, uh, the two. So moving forward uh, in the uh, liquid Solution theory, uh, many scientists have, have developed lots of equations. 
Uh, so here we, we, we have this so-called reddish uh, K-star equation, where we are also having this uh, uh, excess Gibbs energy. And you can see that we try to express this as a, a function of the molar fraction, x1 and x2. And then we need to understand those coefficients, a, b, and c. Can somebody help us to understand what are those coefficients? They try to express uh, what kind of property if I have component one and two. Any thought? Mole fractions, lad. Mole fraction is a. Uh, is expressed by x1 or x2 value. What else you would need in order to understand the mixture? How could it be moles then? Just like straight moles? I had, don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. <laughs> it's a good try, kind of. So when you no, have you're, a you're mixture. Now, but... when, when you have a mixture, we need to understand those oh, molecules. Why? I'm sorry. Volume? Uh, not volume. Volume might be interested, but uh, like we just discussed, uh, we, we, we are confined as uh, TPX. And then at the equilibrium, we are going to fix temperature and pressure. So sort of it's the function of uh, the molar fraction only, right? However, we are still having those coefficients. Uh, my internet is not is not great. Uh, there's a delay. Yes, now I have that. So if I have a mixture, uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, fundamentally we need to distinguish those molecules. So we have the so-called intermolecular interactions, right? So those A, B, C, D, those A, B, C, D, those coefficients, they try to help and uh, identify the, the differences among those components. So in a way, they try to describe the intermolecular interactions. Okay. So once we know the components, uh, once we know the molar fraction of them, once we know uh, they are intermolecular interactions, then we shall know everything. And that is how uh, many scientists, they have been trying really hard to figure out what would be the general equation to describe all sorts of mixtures. So you can see that for this uh, reddish kist equation, uh, we have this general equation form and we shall be able to apply this equation all sorts of mixtures in general, if you are able to figure out A, B, C, D, those coefficients. All right. So there's no answer currently? Like they're working on the answer for A, B, and C? Or like what, what is A, B, and C? Like if I need to put values in for A, B, and C, where am I going to pull these values? That's a good question, Connor. The, the answer is yes, we do have the answer. So the answer is uh, uh, here I don't have the ABCD value because that is a system dependent coefficient. If you try to work, work on ethanol and water, then you have the ABCD values for those. Uh, and if you switch to the other uh, uh, water oil mixture, then you, you, you are going to have a different value. Okay. Okay. But we try to use this format. This is a one type of general equation to describe the liquid mixtures. And then you can see that uh, um, we, 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 we are writing this equation as, uh, uh, as the uh, function of activity coefficient, uh, simply recognizing the pair of mixture property and partial molar property, then we can uh, figure out the activity coefficient, All right? So this is the uh, first reddish case type equation. And uh, uh, moving on, people are proposing various forms of uh, equations using the very similar idea. 
trying to start with uh, x as Gibbs energy of RT as the equation of uh, xi and uh, sun coefficients, then we try to figure, figure out what would be the exact form of the equation. So this is very similar to a previous discussion on the cubic equation of state, right? Vandewa, uh, he proposed the general idea we need to account for the molecular size and intermolecular interactions. And, uh, and from there, people have proposed uh, various equation forms to account for that to uh, deviations. So here, when you are looking at the Margus equation, then uh, you can see that the form of the equation is slightly different from the previous one. But uh, we are still looking at this x1 and x2 as a molar fraction, and then we have this a12 or a21. Okay, so those are the intermolecular interaction related coefficients. And when you uh, look at the, the uh, coefficients in uh, a little bit of detail, then you can see that when we push, when we try to push, for instance, x1 goes zero, then we are able to figure out what would be the coefficient. So uh, if we try to have x1 goes zero, then uh, this whole term would be zero, right? This is zero, then we, we get rid of that term. And if x1 is zero, then x2 is one. So this is one. So now we are going to have a one two on the right uh, hand side, right? So the uh, activity activity coefficient uh, we were talking about the coefficient at dilute, right? So here is exactly the same stuff. So when when we are going to have the x one goes zero the dilute, then the activity coefficient would be activity coefficient at dilute, which is the coefficient of A12. So here we are looking at a, a binary system uh, for the uh, multiple components, then the equation would be more complicated. Similarly, when you try to push X2 goes zero, then utilizing the second equation, get rid of this term, this is one, then you're going to have this, this value. So this is why sometimes for uh, the problem statement or for the uh, appendix values, we are going to have the so-called activity coefficient at dilute. This means for this one, it, x1 goes zero. For the other one, x2 goes zero. And when you think about dilute, we, we do have one other equation, f2 is uh, x2 h2. That is coming out of the Henry's law. Okay. So that is the second equation we are having. And uh, uh, in chemical engineering, as well as petroleum engineering, this Van La equation uh, is very popular. Nothing special, as you can see, that when you compare Van La versus uh, Margaret's equation. Uh, the only change is the, is the format of the equation. Still, we are having x1, x2. We are having sum a12 or a21. Remember, they don't share the same coefficient. So that is, uh, that is the, uh, for here, a12 is, uh, is the, uh, we have to stick with the equation uh, itself and figure out what would be the corresponding value of, of that coefficient. Uh, Professor, you've got a question in the chat. It's a little while back. What, what the question is? Uh, Grayson was wondering what you uh, apply the Redlish equation for. For the exam. <laughs> I'll, show you, <laughs> I'll show you in, in a few minutes. Uh, that's a great question. So uh, uh, let's try to finish the uh, introduction of the so-called theory and equation. And, uh, then we will have some, some practice on those equations. Uh, the following discussion on the, okay. on the, um, on the uh, vapor liquid equilibrium uh, and those uh, phase diagram, uh, they are prepared <laughs> with uh, those equations. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
so here when we when we look at the Van La equation, then uh, I hope you're not surprising that uh, at some point we need to figure out what would be the value of those coefficients. And if you have checked uh, the previous uh, exam problems, we are very interested in uh, figuring that out. So here, if you try to if you try to push uh, the dilute for I'm losing the connection. Let me try to reconnect. Are you able to see the slide? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So here you can see that when we try to push x1 goes zero, uh, I try to test on the uh, first equation. So we are going to get rid of this term, x1 goes zero. And I'm going to have a one, two, and then I'm going to have zero plus uh, x2 is uh, one right now. So this is a two one, then uh, for the other term, this is a to one, also x to goes zero. So that is one, right? So this is why we are going to have the value of a one, two. So this is how we are going to figure out uh, if we try to push this to the, uh, to the extreme small dilute condition, then I'm going to have this a one, two. Similarly, you are able to figure out this a to one value. So uh, uh, to answer Grace, your question in part, when we, when we try to uh, monitor or in the lab, try to measure the molar fraction, we are able to determine the X1, y, y1, X2, Y2, those coefficients. And then we, uh, we just need to figure out the turn. Say in the lab, I'm going to have a few, a few points, then I'm going, to, I'm going to connect those points. I may not, I may not uh, design the very accurate uh, measurement at the dilute condition, but I, 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 I can run this uh, analysis. I can push this to the dilute condition. So if I can do that, then this is the sum coefficient, say A12, if this is the X1, X1 diagram, right? So this is how, you, if I have the general equation of Van La, even without knowing those A1 to A21 coefficients, I can still design the experiments, the measurement, uh, and I can figure out what would be the value of A12 or A21. Okay. And the other way is, of course, we can use uh, uh, the so called molecular simulation. You can use computers to calculate uh, what would be the intermolecular interaction and try to go from there, figure out the A12, A21 values. So that's is the other way. So moving forward, we have the uh, also the very popular equation. Uh, here is the Wilson uh, model. So you can see that it's uh, it's it's getting more complicated. And why we have those more complicated uh, forms? Recall that when we talk about the uh, the two parameter or three parameter corresponding state principles for very simple mixtures, say argon and nitrogen, then we should be very happy with the Van La uh, equation or Van La model. But when you are going to have more complicated structures, uh, water uh, interacting with uh, a larger biomolecular, then you need to worry about the uh, uh, the uh, structure or the uh, various interactions, say hydrogen bonds. So this is why we keep adding more and more coefficients and we try to uh, have the, uh, the description for the uh, complicated systems. So this is why we have this so-called Wilson 
model. So there you can see that we are having more coefficients or the uh, form is a, a little bit more complicated. So as you can see over here, we are still having the general X1, X1 and X2 as the uh, molar fraction. And we need to figure out those coefficients. To, uh, and I try to use different color to show you the, Usually those uh, equations are in high symmetry, as you can see. And uh, the, uh, those, uh, those coefficients can be evaluated using the interaction parameters. So th this parameter ij is coming out of, this is the atom of i, and we try to estimate the interaction uh, uh, between the two type of atoms. So we go from the pair intermolecular interactions, we try to figure out what would be those coefficients and then we just plug in, okay? So this is the so-called Wilson model. And then if you move on, if you move on, you may realize that we, 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 we are able to connect the previous discussions uh, into the uh, model calculation. I added those slides in, so uh, you probably don't have that in the uh, in the draft uh, lecture notes. So here you can see that uh, if we are combining the compressibility factor, say Z, uh, if we are looking at the PV over RT, the general term, if we are looking at the those reduced unit, if we are having the access to the critical conditions, then somehow we have those equations that we are able to describe the more complicated mixtures, right? So we are utilize almost all of those previous equations to figure out the calculation. So you can see that if I have water, say water and uh, ethanol, then I need to look up for TC, PC, VC, the omega value, and I need to know what would be the equation to use so I can calculate out for water, I can calculate out the, uh, the RA value, uh, having the omega value. And if I know the working temperature, then I can figure out what would be the TR, reduce the temperature. So if I know the Z, Z value, if I know the TR value, and that I know, uh, PC and uh, uh, the R value, then I can figure out what would be the volume for water at that temperature, okay? So if I know that value, then I can probably combine the other components, uh, this lambda ij, then I can figure out what would be the interaction of water, ETOH, and I also need to figure out ETOH with what? Okay, so I have to lambda IJ and uh, lambda II. So this is the general uh, uh, route to figure out those uh, those calculations. And that uh, if you. Uh, are familiar with the uh, software of Aspen. Uh, in the software, they have multiple uh, equations figured out uh, in order to calculate that. I'll try to show you some of the uh, Aspen plots uh, next Tuesday uh, when, we, when we talk about the uh, vapor liquid equilibrium, okay? So now moving on, if we are looking at the uh, other type of NRTL non-random to liquid model, then this is uh, more or less the same. It's getting a little bit more and more complicated, but the uh, core part is still, we try, to, we try to describe the activity coefficient as a function of the molar fraction, and we need to figure out those coefficients, okay? I use uh, the various color to identify uh, the different coefficients, and uh, here is, uh, the list of equations, how you are able to calculate those coefficients. 
right? And lastly, this is the so-called universal quasi chemical model. So as long as I have liquid liquid mixture, uh, I should be able to estimate what would be the uh, the properties of that liquid mixture. So I'm not going to discuss in in details about the equation, but the general idea is still the same. We, we try to have the equation as a function of x1 or x2. Uh, and then we are going to have a bunch of, of coefficients. We need to figure that out. And we need to correlate those coefficients into uh, the intermolecular interactions. All right. So with that said, I hope that uh, you, you, you see the general idea. We have liquid-liquid mixture. And depending on whether it's a simple liquid mixture or it's a, a, a quite complicated mixture, then we, uh, we need to figure out uh, what would be uh, the equation to use. And if not, how do I, how do I propose the, uh, the, 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 uh, the future uh, more general equations? So here I, I just put together some uh, really interesting review article or the historic review article to show you uh, the efforts of the past a few decades, uh, how people are trying to understand the liquid mixture. Okay, let's come back to the reality. Uh, we, we, we have the equation, we need to somehow figure out the, the calculation and uh, the more interesting part is how, how do we solve exam problems, right? So let's, let's try to take a, a look at, let's try to run some quick analysis of those ideas. Uh, so the first one is um, the uh, final exam we had uh, in 2018. So here we have the problem statement that says we have a binary system and uh, uh, it's at the condition of the azeotrope, uh, which means the for the uh, liquid and the vapor composition is exactly the same, xi is yi. And we know the x1 value, x1 is uh, 0.75 and we know the temperature. So we don't manipulate the temperature. My internet is still a little bit slow. Yeah. It looks like every time Apple Apple delivers some major upgrade, there will be a problem, uh, whether it's for iPad or for the Mac OS. So that makes complete sense. It's really terrible, those big techs, what they are doing. Anyway, so here, here uh, we have the information at that temperature, we have the P1 set. This is our saturation pressure. This is the saturation pressure of the, of the second component. And uh, we, we, we are asked to treat the uh, gas phase as the ideal gas, as the ideal gas. And the liquid phase can be modeled with the one parameter Margaret's equation, okay? It's still still a delay. Is the one parameter Margill's equation just assuming that A12 equals A21? Perfect answer, yes. Okay. So you can see that here the, uh, for the liquid mixture, we may have very similar liquid molecules. So this is why we can use one parameter to describe all type of interactions over there, great. So uh, I don't think iPad is working too well. I'm still waiting on the update from my iPad to the uh, screen. So anyway, let's move on. So we have these two uh, activity coefficient equation and the problem of 
of, of A is to ask us to calculate the activity coefficient of component one at that temperature and the X one value. So how do we figure out that calculation? Do you just do you just plug in x one? Uh, I don't think my iPad works, so that that is really bad. Okay, one more try. Okay. I need to give up the iPad. Cannot see the update. You should send that to Apple. It sounds great. Like I'm all I'm all for. It. I got an iPhone, but bugs are very stupid. Apple's costing me my education. That, that's that's the bottom line. I think we send that clip to YouTube, right to Apple. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. That that's uh, sorry for the inconvenience. Let's try to skip the um, example discussion because without uh, without writing on the slides, I don't think uh, that would be too useful. So we'll come back and discuss those examples uh, next Tuesday. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, we'll come back on those. So let's move on a, a little bit. Let's try to look at the uh, vapor liquid equilibrium. And I'm still cannot write on my board, so I, I will just talk. <clears throat> so the uh, the vapor liquid equilibrium is uh, uh, as I have uh, I added a two cartoon illustration to show you how important that is for any any production. We need to figure out what would be the ratio between liquid and vapor, and, and so on. We we are able to come up ways of uh, running catalytic reactions or running separations uh, moving forward. So that is indeed the uh, the um, the idea, and I like this cartoon because that is a perfect illustration, uh, which says for the liquid vapor equilibrium, we are really looking at the temperature and pressure. So once we figure out the temperature and pressure, then we shall have all the equations available to us to figure out inside of that container what would be the fraction of liquid and vapor, and for within each phase what would be the molar fraction, okay? Uh, uh. So if we try to have a quick review on the uh, phase equilibrium, as uh, I said at the very beginning of, of, of today's lecture, we are, we are depending on the three equations, temperature, pressure, chemical potential, or fugacity. And we need to, let me at least have this, at least have this, no, not this one. Maybe laser point. Okay. So, uh, so here you can see that we are moving back to the familiar domain, 
of fugacity calculation. And I try to convince you why um, fugacity calculation is again the core of uh, the vapor liquid equilibrium. So if we move, move on, that is a little bit uh, review. Let me try to get rid of this sidebar. Get rid of this sidebar. Okay. So, uh, so over here, if you think about the uh, formulas we have discussed so far, and I try to summarize this for the liquid phase or for the general solution phase. When we talk about a solution, it could be vapor mixtures or it, it, it could be liquid mixtures. So here we have the Rouse rule, which says for the ideal case, even we are talking about the ideal uh, solution for the liquid, then uh, for the mixture of uh, Component I, we can calculate the uh, fugacity as uh, proportional to the molar fraction Xi. So that is Fi at the saturation pressure. If you recall the first case we discussed about uh, liquid uh, fugacity calculation, we try to understand at low pressure, then we can have this saturation pressure is uh, the case. So if I have a pure liquid uh, at the low pressure, the pure liquid is uh, at equilibrium with the corresponding vapor. So I have this Fi of the liquid shall be the same as Fi of the vapor. And Fi of the vapor, the fugacity of the vapor at low pressure is the partial pressure over there. And the partial pressure for the pure liquid is the saturation pressure, right? So this is how we are going to have the pure liquid at low pressure, more or less around the saturation pressure, the fugacity shall be the saturation pressure for both liquid and vapor. So now if you are moving the pure liquid into ideal liquid mixture, then we just need to figure out what is the ratio of that liquid component so that we are going to have this, all right? So this is very much the similar as Fi of the mixture is Fi of the pure multiplied by the molar fraction. And also the other, the, the other equation we have is uh, uh, through the uh, Harris law, which is at the dilute condition, uh, still in the mixture. For the dilute component, we are able to figure out the uh, fugacity if we know the Henry's constant. This is the uh, molar fraction of the dilute component. So we multiply it by its own Henry's constant, then we shall have the fugacity uh, of the uh, liquid component in the mixture. So this hat, the hat over here is always talking about the mixture, okay? And then we, uh, we also have the so-called Louis Randall's law which is the uh, more general term. Uh, so this is I component in the mixture. Uh, if this is ideal solution, meaning all those liquid molecules, their intermolecular interactions are very similar to each other, then uh, we are able to go from the pure fugacity of that component and multiply its molar fraction. Okay, so of those, uh, Three, three equations, two could be applied at any pressure. So we don't have any limitation on high pressure, low pressure, as long as you satisfy the, uh, the dilute condition, as long as you satisfy the ideal solution case, meaning all those molecules, their intermolecular interactions are very similar to each other, then it's good. Uh, but for the Roche rule, we have to satisfy because we, now we are using the saturation pressure to, to represent the pure uh, fugacity of the component. So over here, we have to satisfy this is the low pressure term, right? So that is why I want to have a, a quick revisit on this. And as we discussed, we have the two assumptions to the Roche rule. So uh, 
uh, we try to model the vapor phase as the ideal gas. And then at the low pressure, uh, I, I did not have that, but this shall be at the uh, relative low pressure. Uh, and we are treating the liquid phase as the ideal solution. So the, as long as we know the molar fraction, we shall be able to correlate and calculate the fugacity of that liquid uh, mixture component is uh, proportional to the the product of its own saturation pressure uh, and the molar fraction of Y. So that is uh, still the previous previous case. And now if we put uh, the uh, route row together for a binary system, then we start with, uh, let me to, do I need to write something at least? Uh, so we, we always start with this Fi. This is for the vapor. Right, that is always the starting equation. And, and, and moving over there, then we try to look at each component. For the, for the vapor phase, recall we, 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 we uh, on the Roche law for the vapor phase, uh, we try to use the ideal gas. For the liquid, we try to use the ideal solution on the low pressure. So this is why for each component, we can write P is the total pressure, PY1 is P1 set, uh, X1, PY2 is P2 set, X2, okay? So that is for a binary system described by the Roche law. So over there, let's talk about the deviation. So if we try to start with the route draw, which is the low pressure uh, ideal solution, but what if we cannot satisfy that? What if I, I, I do have to increase the pressure and uh, uh, on the high pressures, the liquid molecules, they, they may uh, change their intermolecular interaction and uh, can no longer treat their interactions very similar to each other. Then we have to modify the uh, starting equation. So recall, this is a Routes rule, right? This is a simple case. This is a low pressure, low pressure ideal solution. Okay, and now if, if, for example, the liquid phase is more and more complicated, I'm going to include uh, this activity coefficient. So let's think about how I can have that equation. So recall that uh, if I have this, uh, let me try to write down. What is AI? Activity. Thank you. AI, the very general, sorry for this ugly handwriting. So that is the definition, right? The activity is defined as the fugacity of the liquid component over the standard state. But the standard state we can choose, right? So I'm going to use Fi liquid component over Pi. There's no problem over there. We just use the PI set as my reference state. Okay. And then at the same time, I'm going to have this uh, gamma I, which is defined as the activity coefficient, which is AI over XI. So over there, if you, if you combine that two equation, 
we are going to have this fi will be ai pi set This is from the first equation. And if we uh, utilize the activity coefficient, then this is xi. Pi set. Right? Nothing special. We always start from with fi of the mixture. This is for the vapor, she'll be exactly the same as Fi out of the mixture of the liquid. So now for the second case, unfortunately, I cannot use the low pressure ideal solution. Then I have to return to the general definition of the fugacity and its correlation with their coefficients. So I can, I can write down this equation. And that is the general term for anything, okay? So this is the, no, this is any pressure No, any solution still with this low pressure. Because we need that low pressure to utilize the ideal gas for the vapor phase. Now, when I have any solution uh, over here, the liquid phase cannot satisfy the ideal solution assumption from Rotro, right? So the, the last case is the truly any system. If I have any system, then I have to treat both liquid and vapor as uh, the general case. And I hope we are able to figure that out. This is, uh, this is the phi i, this is the uh, fugacity coefficient, which is defined as fi in the, in the vapor over pi, right? That is uh, y i. P over Fi in the vapor phase. So now you can see that for the fugacity in the vapor out of the mixture, the general form is always the uh, fugacity coefficient Yi P. That is a big achievement. You see, we, we, we are able to start from this very general fugacity equation. And now we have this, again, the general equation. So I hope you, you somehow see the importance because over here, we are able to measure xi and yi. We are able to have a very good equation to estimate the saturation pressure, the so-called Antonio equation. We are going to have that in a minute. And now the only remaining stuff is, is the, one is the activity coefficient, and one is the fugacity coefficient. So we have been talking about the fugacity coefficient calculation a lot using TVX and TPX, right? For any general term, we are able to calculate using using those equations. So now, with the with the discussion of the excess Gibbs energy calculation, we are also able to figure out those activity coefficient. We have those Wilson, we have those uh, 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 Van La equation. We have even more complicated equations to calculate that activity coefficient. So this is how we are going to eventually uh, figure out the big picture of everything. 
So we need to be comfortable in the fugacity coefficient calculation. That is the previous unit. Uh, here, we, if we are able to calculate the activity coefficient through those various modules, then we shall be able to deal with any vapor liquid equilibrium system or any mixtures. Okay, so this is why I, I, I decided to add this slide to show you uh, why, you know, one after the other, we try to have all those different uh, uh, discussions. So uh, moving on, I, I just want to quickly review this, uh, uh, the previous slides, how we come up with the ideas, uh, especially for the Gibbs energy moving from the mixture, moving from the component in the mixture, and then moving to the pure component of the Gibbs energy. And I, and I do consider this, as I said in the title, this could be the worst slide in thermal. This one single slide could be the worst slide in, in thermal, but it is probably the most important slide in thermal as well. So this is how we are going to monitor the molar fraction uh, in reality for the production. We need to understand this so we can, we can control the uh, flow rate and we can estimate the uh, production rate uh, as well. And over here, then you can see that we are going to turn the calculation into chemical potential, fugacity, or the partial pressure. And there we are going to look at those, uh, those definitions. The first is fugacity coefficient. And then we are going to have activity, activity coefficient. And then we try to correlate uh, what would be the fugacity coefficient in the mixture. I should have a head. And what would be the corresponding activity coefficient of the mixture? And if I know that, I know everything. All right. So again, that is uh, still from the previous slide to identify the pairs. Uh, and that is the equation we just, we just uh, have. And the real challenging part, I want to add this, is, this is for any system. This is a universal general equation to us. For any problem, you can use, use this equation. So there you can see that I, I, I try to put together those stuff. So for the, for the, for both the uh, fugacity coefficient or activity coefficient, we are able to figure out those, uh, those calculations, right? From there, we are able to calculate the mixture. And over here, we are able to uh, utilize the um, excess Gibbs energy uh, in order to figure out the activity coefficient. So those would be the connection uh, in uh, this equation. And I add, uh, have the uh, list over here. So for all those activity coefficient models, we need to know the activity coefficient. And, and among all those models, so it's always described as a, a function of component one, component two, and the intermolecular interactions. You can keep adding terms, but as long as you know those intermolecular interaction terms, then in general, you should be able to figure out the activity coefficient. Okay, so I hope this, uh, this helps to understand why bother, why introducing all those excess, all those mixing terms and uh, try to correlate uh, the partial molar property calculation. Because eventually this is, uh, this is uh, the universal equation. We probably need to have a t-shirt and uh, with this as a logo on the t-shirt, because this is indeed the most important equation out of thermal. And, and this is also the core equation for your next class separation. Okay, so let's try to look at some simple case. Uh, coming back to the reality, uh, we, we are still trying to stay with the, uh, the Rouse region. 
where we have those uh, uh, very nice ideal gas for the vapor ideal solution for liquid. And this is relatively low uh, in terms of the uh, in terms of the total pressure. So now if you think about the uh, two equations to determine the equilibrium, and, and if you think about how many unknown parameters we have over here, so we have P total, two saturation pressure, X and Y components. So all together we have seven unknown parameters, but we only have two equations. Wait a minute, we actually have four, right? So still that's not enough. For seven parameters, I need to have seven uh, equations, but we only have, have four. What else we have? Well, let's think about the temperature. We can measure the temperature because this is always T and P. We, we have to measure TP to really quantify the uh, mixture, the condition. What's the use of the what's the use of the of the temperature? Well, the temperature is uh, if I know the temperature, sort of the extra information, I can quickly figure out the saturation pressure. Right, so P1 set, P2 set, the known also to me. For example, for, uh, for uh, this mixture, uh, as an example, we are able to look for the Antonio equation and that is the format for the two substance. So those, those parameter, A, B, C parameters are uh, the, the, uh, are the, uh, the uh, coefficients for each species. So if I know this is water, then I, I can have the ABC values for the Antonio equation for water. Very similar to the other species. So this is a very useful equation, meaning I know the temperature, I know P1 set and P2 set. So now if you, you think about the remaining parameter, well, we don't have too many unknown parameters. Now, if I know the four equations, if I know the temperature, meaning I'm having the two saturations, right? So now I have the six parameters known, which means that there's only one unknown parameter and I need to design the measurement. So this is why, for example, if I'm going to calculate, if I'm trying to, uh, change the x1 value, I should be able to determine everything of the system. Because out of the seven parameters, there's only one parameter I need to manipulate. That is the only degree of freedom for the system. Very similarly, if I'm going to manipulate the y1 value, then all the other values should be, should be determined. So if I know the y x1, then I can determine X2. I can determine Y1. I can determine Y2. Okay. So that is how we are going to simplify the calculation with uh, uh, the vapor liquid equilibrium. And of course I need to know the temperature so that I can utilize the Antonio equation to figure out if I know the temperature then I know P1 set and P2 set. Oh, terrible writing. Okay. So this is how we 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 are going to we are going to describe the uh, mixture, here is the, uh, the plot from the textbook. This is the so-called PXY diagram. So we can uh, understand this as uh, the, uh, the diagram for X1 and X2. And that is yielded at a known temperature. Okay, if I know the temperature, I can quickly figure out the two saturation pressure. 
right? And then if I if I figure out the uh, the condition, say this is uh, zero point four for the x one, so this is the value for the x one, then I should be able to. This is the x one value. Then I can easily figure out what would be the corresponding y one. So if this is x one, we can use the route rule to figure out this is the corresponding y one. And if I know uh, if I know x one, then of course x two is known, one minus x one. And if I figure out the y one, then y two is known to me, one minus y one, right? So that is the uh, way to use the equilibrium. Uh, and here we have the two different names. One is the so-called bubble line, one is the uh, the dual line, and sometimes we call this as a, as a bubble pressure. B O B B L E, bubble. This is the bubble pressure. So why this is the case? So when you look at, for example, the condition A, what is the state at A? Is it a liquid or is it a vapor? Liquid. Liquid, yes. You, if you forget how to determine, then always look at the pressure. At high pressure, at high pressure, that should be the liquid. Liquid will be more stable at high pressure. So if I'm moving from this liquid uh, and I'm tr trying to lower the pressure at this condition B, I'm going to have the first bubble, the first vapor. So this is why I call this line as a bubble line. Uh, this means at different uh, molar fraction, when I'm going to have the first bubble and the corresponding pressure is the so-called bubble pressure. Similarly, if I'm moving from this condition, and that should be the vapor phase on the, that molar fraction, okay? So if I'm moving all the way, I'm trying to increase the pressure to the mixture, over here, I'm going to have the first liquid drop. So this is why I call this line as the do line. And of course, I can, I can also describe the pressure as the dual pressure. All right. So as I have, for example, if this is a Y1 starting from the vapor phase, then over here, I can try to calculate the corresponding X1 value. So this is knowing the Y1 to calculate X1. On the other side, knowing the x1, calculate the y1. And this line, we call this as a tie line to connect the liquid vapor uh, to uh, equilibrium point, All right? So over here, of course, any point along the tie line, you're going to have a liquid vapor mixture. Okay, uh, I want to stop here because it's kind of struggling without a, a, a pen writing on my slides. So uh, I try to figure out another backup plan if the iPad does not work too well uh, and move on the other, uh, other discussions. So any questions so far for our discussion today? the worst slide in thermo yeah i like this one maybe okay. we okay. maybe we need to design a t-shirt together uh, with my favorite equation okay <laughs>
And that's the worst slide in thermo because it's not as precise as it probably needs to be, but it's also a vague gist of the course. No, I, I, I you need to, you need to understand the worst in the other way. You need to take it as the most important slide in thermo, uh, because with that slide or with, okay. that, with that equation, this equation includes everything we have discussed so far. All those uh, okay. equations, all those concepts, all those calculations we have discussed so far. So you, okay. if you are going oh, to I memorize, you. if you are going to memorize one quantity, that would be fugacity. If you are going to memorize one equation for your life out of thermal, I hope this is the equation to go. I okay. gotcha. <laughs> I got gotcha. All right. Uh, enjoy the rest of the week, and I'll see you guys next Tuesday. All right. Thank you. Office hours today. Yep. Same time, same place. Yeah. Mm -hmm.